Otter had just given her a handful of sleeping pills. Shelia was conscious, but unable to scream for help or even ask what was happening. She just knew it was no good. Heather had not been the perfect daughter lately. As Heather watched calmly, wow, Tommy bro. picked up a fruit bowl and hit Sheila over the head over and over again. Sheila fell to the floor hopelessly, but Heather and her boyfriend beat her to death. Then they did numbered her body and stuffed her into a suitcase some gypsy shit with mental part in your brain disconnects to where you can kill your mom yes sir we back with another video i said was well, on baby was to your dog your day was man i need y'all to sit back and relax get you some smoke get you some drink and we're gonna tap into this scary series once again double back don't be lazy the video we're gonna watch today is the crazy teen who killed her mom and stuffed in a suitcase I don't know what the fuck was going through her mind to stuff her mom in a suitcase for any amount of bread. So let's see what this girl got going on, man. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Jalan, Jalan, Jalan in the jail. First, I asked Tommy Schaefer to help me find somebody to kill my mom for $50,000. And he said no. Just wait, this ain't no movie. You just don't walk up to somebody and be like, hey, can you kill my mom? For some money. Spark up. Cheers. That, I got this whole new savage idea in my head that I wanted to kill her in a hotel room. I don't mind. I don't mind. The, the one I don't like is the Bro, blonde. What? Her. I can't stand her. She's rude. When Tommy Schaefer entered Sheila's room at the St. Regis Resort in Bali, Sheila was falling asleep. Her daughter had just given her a handful of sleeping pills. Sheila was conscious, but unable to scream for help or even ask what was happening. She just knew it was no good. Heather had not been the perfect daughter lately. As Heather watched calmly, wow, Tommy bro. picked up a fruit bowl and hit Sheila over the head over and over again. Sheila fell to the floor hopelessly, but Heather and her boyfriend beat her to death. Then they dismembered her body and stuffed her into a suitcase. Some gypsy shit. I just don't understand what, what mental part in your brain disconnects to where you can kill your mom with somebody that you just met. Then Bro. struggling with it as they lifted it into a taxi. You can imagine how the taxi driver felt when he saw taxi, blood bro? oozing out of the suitcase. When he rang the Indonesian authorities, he began an outrageous investigation that would put a pregnant 19-year-old heiress in prison uh, for just seven years. And this ain't fair. Cuckoo, death penalty, bro, for killing a nigga who killed his moms. And she killed her moms? It got seven years in Indonesia? Man, throw the book at her, brother. It's over with, bro. Throw the key. Were there red flags before nah, this happened? Man. And what she happened after her here, release man. from Indonesian prison? This is the full harrowing story of she Heather Mack and it. Sheila Von Wies. She in August 2014, here, Heather Mack, Sheila Von Wies, and Tommy mm -hmm. Schaefer flew business class from Chicago to Bali, Indonesia. One ticket cost over $10,000, but that's besides the point. Heather and Sheila could afford it, and oh, they really wanted nah. to repair their mother-daughter relationship. Things had escalated in a- Man, repair mother and daughter relationship to spend 10 racks is crazy. Bad bro. way over the last eight years, racks. and she was yet to turn 11, and ever since, Sheila hardly recognized her as a loving daughter. She was closer to a monster. But now, she was slowly turning into a young adult. In a few months, she would turn 19. She had a boyfriend, Michael Schaefer, and with a little luck, she would turn her life around and work toward a career. Sheila, as always, wanted what to give her daughter the though. chance to redeem herself. And Sheila worked hard at maintaining a happy, patient face while her daughter was going Yo, through her moments. You need fathers in your life. Prime example. If Pops was here, we never know. None of this probably wouldn't have happened. Better, and the two of them became friends again. Except Sheila had always turned a blind eye to the red flags piling up around her daughter. Perhaps she didn't want to believe Heather was capable of doing such a thing. Or perhaps she really didn't think her daughter could off her mom. On she, August 14th, Sheila and surprised, Heather checked boy. into their room at the St. Regis Hotel in Nusa Dua, Bali. But here's the thing. Sheila did not know that Tommy was coming to Bali too. How does nigga pop up? and smoke some shit and he wasn't even supposed to be there i was gonna say how did he come up in this situation 10 racks for one pair person 10 racks for two people that's 20. who paid for um old boy ticket he had accounted for at the bank that would have been a red flag right there before we went whoa 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 where does ten thousand go 
P's and Q's. Mom's credit card behind her back. Her deceit had already started on this trip that Sheila put so much energy into. Needless to say, when she found out, Bro. Sheila was upset. Once again, Heather was doing the opposite of what she was told. Sheila did not have the energy to talk to her daughter that day, so she stormed off and enjoyed the rest of the afternoon on her own around the resort's many facilities. That evening, she returned to her room knowing that her daughter was there, but there wasn't much of a conversation. Heather offered her mom a glass of water, and Sheila fell into a deep, drowsy mm. state on the couch. Before Heather and her boyfriend Tommy took her life, though, Sheila had the strength to scream one last thing. She just went nuts, and she was just screaming and screaming and telling me that, that was when I was gonna die, that was when I was gonna die. But Sheila was the only one who would die that night. Heather and her boyfriend kicked and beat her until she wasn't breathing anymore. Then they used a handsaw to turn her body into little pieces and stuff it into a giant suitcase. The pair did not get into a cab that night. They just left the suitcase in the trunk of a taxi and fled. Worried, the driver looked at the suitcase. He felt no one of those DNA. terrible knots in his stomach where he saw the suitcase was literally covered in blood. It was still oozing out of it, into his trunk. So he drove as fast as he could to the nearest law enforcement station. Within an hour, the body in the suitcase was identified as Sheila mm. Ann Von Weiss, and her killers on, were identified huh? as her daughter, Heather Mack, and her boyfriend, Tommy Schaefer. The authorities had their names, photos, and ages, all from their hotel reception. How did you think you was gonna get away? You didn't use no gloves, and you just decided to leave. Not End of the day, they were anything. found at a budget motel less than a mile away from the St. Regis Resort. They were immediately arrested, and their walk of shame through an Indonesian jail made its way to every news outlet in the country. But this young couple didn't confess. Heather, in particular, put on a great show. She said she was in great distress. An armed gang had just attacked the three of them, and her mother had been unalived. She and Tommy had barely escaped with their lives. That's why they had to run to a motel sure they but why not run to a police Crazy, station bro. just saying and when the detectives traced their cell phones they unveiled a digital trail leading to sheila's last moments alive heather and tommy had meticulously planned sheila's slaying they were charged with first degree murder and the complicated backstory of heather and sheila was slowly unfurling Heather Mack was born in 1995 into jazz royalty. Her dad, James Mack, was a mm. famous musician and composer who shifted the all-encompassing jazz genre toward his own style ever since the 1950s. That's right, James Mack was born in 1929, so he was well into his 60s Sheila when he had his daughter. Heather's mom, baby. on the other hand, was born in 1952. Sheila Ann Von Weiss was an academic socialite, also retired and very financially Stable, so Heather got all the attention and financial support she could have gotten growing up. She grew up in a very nice oh, house, yeah. and she had, no from all accounts, a privileged upbringing. And according to Sheila's sister, Heather was also pampered with care and affection. First you know, only child. Uh, she felt so blessed and lucky, and it was a really wonderful family. You know, Heather's dad, Jim, was just, Heather was his princess. And what happened girl. to Pops, yeah, nigga? Just, he just loved her. I mean, they he loved the way But Jim's he was old at. age caught up with him in a series of unfortunate okay. incidents that would scar little Heather forever. Okay. In 2001, when she was six and he was 72, Jeez. the family was on a Royal Caribbean Mediterranean cruise when Jim suffered a foot injury. After inadequate treatment from the ship doctor, Jim became partially paralyzed. He filed a lawsuit against Damn. Royal Caribbean, but it took several years to reach a settlement, during which his health never recovered. A few years later, Jim was diagnosed with colon Whoa. cancer, and during a holiday in Greece in 2006, he died in his hotel room following a pulmonary brother, embolism. 11-year-old Heather was left with her mom, Sheila. He, he was holding it down, bro. He was holding it down. Looked okay. Plus, when people look at a family, they're tempted to judge their happiness by their financial state. And when you take a quick look at their million and a half dollar mansion in Chicago's Frank Lloyd Wright neighborhood, it was not hard to think these two were doing all right. Except money never has anything to do with happiness, as countless studies and experts keep confirming. And after Jim died, Heather's relationship with Sheila took a turn for the worse. Much worse. I would have been no, whooping her ass. After her father died, began to slowly 
see our mom as a bit of a competitor for attention. Many kids start acting out during their teenage years, but Heather was something mm -hmm. else. She was defiant toward any type of authority to the point that she showed signs of oppositional defiant disorder. That is a mm. really short temper. Blaming others for her own misbehaviors, refusing to follow orders, okay. annoying people just to get a reaction, and pretty much doing the exact opposite of everything she was told. Sheila and I had many, many talks, and, uh, you know, I, I said, you know, there's a reason the term troubled teen is out there. In middle school, Heather was already right, so skipping school, the then came the hanging out with the legal. wrong crowds, illegal substances, violence, and theft. Theft? With Heather's money? Yeah, she was stealing from her own mom. Well, she told me that she was being abused by Heather. And Heather had an explosive temper. Usually, it's the father of the family. It was petite Heather against her mom. And despite her small size, she could inflict a lot of harm and fear. You're Sheila bugging, lived in a constant state of fear. In January 2010, for example, Heather was 14 when she punched Sheila's already broken ankle. In February of the oh, following yeah. year, she broke Sheila's arm and then removed the phone cord to prevent her from calling 911. And in November mm -hmm. 2012, she her mom so hard she left a bruise. This was the stuff of nightmares. Imagine living with this under your roof. And it to, was to the point of she was sustaining serious injury. But here's the thing. The domestic violence of the child is fucking insane, bro. Although Sheila would phone authorities, at least when her daughter wasn't cutting phone cords, she wouldn't go through with the charges. Domestic violence? With your child? Oh, no, nah, bro. I'm gonna call the police. Please, right now, please. My, my daughter's with my ass. Whooping my ass. It's a squabble game, right, nigga? I mean, it, it's a really hard thing to, um, to do uh, when it's your own child. You know, I would, you know, talk to her about, you know, you've got to start treating your mom with respect. You've got to start going to school. You, you can't. More Heather. Sheila's sister Debbie was not the only one who saw this, but she was the only one who raised the alarm bells over and over again. She would tell her husband she was worried for Sheila's life and constantly talk to Heather, urging her to calm down. Heather's personality never really changed, but the adults around her kept their hopes up. After all, many teenagers she, are huh? unnecessarily rebellious and their parents give them all the freedom, care, and support that they need. Sadly, none of the adults in Heather's life realized that she was a lost cause, or at least a person they had to stay away from. And this would come at a great cost. When Heather was 18, she started dating a boy named Tommy Schaefer. He was two years older and also came from a single parent household. It's always the little boys that fuck up the situations, bro. Group of friends from middle school on, but that group started to distance themselves. He was tearing her ass up. He was dropping dick in her tall tales and he liked to exaggerate the truth if tommy's own friends disliked his compulsive lying imagine mm. how sheila felt about her daughter dating this dude yeah, hey, nice. yeah. she thought he was a bad influence so it's safe to assume sheila's world crumbled when heather brought him along to bali on her stolen credit card and it would she... get worse than that heather proudly told her mom she was pregnant with tommy this mm. meant two things for sheila first there goes her daughter's chance at a college degree and a respectable career or at least there would be a significant delay to it but heather never seemed motivated by that idea in the first place second she would father a child to a young man sheila despised a compulsive liar so with a similarly short up, temper bro. and a bad crowd was not going to be a good dad sheila knew sheila and Heather fought through the night about this. There was no resolution. Heather was not going to end the pregnancy and Sheila did not know what to do with her daughter. She didn't want her stealing from her anymore. She didn't want any more DV from her. And she sure as day did not want Heather to have this baby only to show it the same kind of abuse. But Sheila did not know that her fight was in vain. That night, she would lose her life to Heather and her boyfriend. Less than 24 hours later, Indonesian authorities began uncovering the nasty texts between Heather and Tommy, sent over the Come previous months. 
Sheila's demise had been planned down to every detail, except the plan wasn't very bright, not the killers. This is what Tommy wrote to one of his friends six months before his trip to Bali. So that bitch Heather is crazy, huh? She asked me to do something really insane. She asked me to find someone to kill her mom for 50k. And when Tommy couldn't find a paid assassin, the teen couple resorted to unaliving Sheila themselves. This is what Tommy wrote to Heather weeks before Bali. Does she swim? Plus a bunch of emotions suggesting that they drown her. How did these two think that they wouldn't Bro. get caught? Also, Tommy... You don't watch movies? You, you too busy fucking off? have been a really Jeez, loving boyfriend bro. calling Heather the B word while talking about her with a friend and the loving couple continued planning Sheila's slang via texts she while they were in Bali. You. Yeah, they didn't even meet face to face to hash out the most horrible de details. Jeez, Heather and Tommy were text messaging back and forth uh, after Sheila and Heather had gone back to their suite. In one text, Heather wrote that she would try to unalive her mother with her own hands. This followed. Tommy, try your best. Can you whack her in the head with a big ass bowl? Heather, can you? Tommy, yes, come in the hallway right now. This is Tommy with what a fruit bowl fuck? hidden in his shirt seconds before he entered Sheila's room. Tommy hid in the bathroom Yo. while Sheila was slowly falling into a deep sleeping pill induced sleep. Meanwhile, he and Heather were still texting. Among their last texts was an attempt to make Sheila look like she was drunk when she slipped and fell, hitting her head. But mm. then a simple question, why did they beat her to death? And you gotta think bro. If you want to be a criminal, you got to be smart. Remember her body. If taking Sheila's life wasn't disgusting enough, watch Heather's Look attitude hands, following mama. her Get arrest. The fuck out of here. <laughs> they thought he was gonna f She enjoyed Bro. the attention. And while Sheila's family was in shambles, she showed zero remorse. Their hearing was straightforward. With so much evidence against them, Tommy and Heather could not talk their way out of this. However, their sentences were more lenient than those that they would have received in the US. Tommy was sentenced to 18 years behind bars, while Heather received only 18? a decade. According to her attorney, Heather did show remorse once she was off camera. We're asking her, don't you feel sorry for your mom? that she already gone. Yeah, I did. And she's crying at the time. It goes to show you how fucked up the world is. It ain't got nothing to do with the US. The US is fucked up. I ain't gonna lie. Y'all locking niggas up 20 years for some bud. Not equivalent to um murder, but yeah. Niggas get out for murdering niggas in the US. Can this bitch gonna go to jail for 10 years? Niggas also be getting the book and the death penalty though, bro. Especially for some shit like this in the US, my nigga, you going to jail for life. Knitting. You going to school, you doing all that prison shit for sure. Orange is the new black D. Get your bunk ready for killing your my dudes. Purposely texting and everything is lined up and you laughing and acting like it never happened. You're fucked. Put a book at the bitch, man. Her interviews and post videos on her social about? media. Yep, she was allowed a smartphone inside prison. Jalan, Jalan, Jalan in the jail. She also spoke very openly about her plan to unalive her mother. First, I asked Tommy Schaefer to help me find somebody to kill my mom for $50,000. And he said no. After that, I got this whole new savage idea in my head that I wanted to kill her in a hotel room. Yeah. Heather claims that she believes her mom unalived her like dad that? all those years back in Greece. It's unclear whether she believed that since she was 10 going on 11 or if this is something she concocted after she took her life. She a sort of excuse shit, of doing what she did. Except no one thinks that's an excuse for taking a life, especially your own mother's. Plus her dad was in his 70s and suffering from a slew of devastating illnesses. Right now, Simply no one is buying her justification. Heather also gave birth in prison to a daughter. Here she is cradling her and trash talking a fellow inmate. I don't mind, I don't mind them. The one I don't like is the blonde one. Her, I can't stand her. She's rude. Heather was allowed to raise her daughter in prison to the shock of her family back in Chicago. They would have preferred the little girl to have a more normal, safer life with them. In 2021, Heather was released from prison for good behavior. She had served just under seven years. 
but she was not free yet. As soon as she landed in the US, she was handcuffed and taken in by the there FBI. In the summer of 2023, she pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to commit murder. Mm -hmm. She will be serving 26 years in a Chicago prison. Tommy is still- Should have kept your ass in Indonesia fucking with them people, but you want to bring your stupid ass back to the US? Deal didn't learn your mother lesson. Obviously you don't know. When you cross to the United States border, that, that Indonesia case didn't have anything to do with the United States of America. We gonna get ours too, but this bitch is crazy. She needed that sentence in Indonesia, potentially facing a life imprisonment sentence once he steps back on U.S. soil. These He's two through. got a reality check as soon as the deed was done. He it's through. heartbreaking that they thought they could take an innocent life without consequence. Perhaps Heather's privileged background led her to believe that Crocodile she could get tears. away with murder. It's also heartbreaking that she showed that little remorse afterward and that she tried to pin her crime on her mother. Remember how people suffering from oppositional defiant disorder tend to blame others for their own misbehaviors yeah maybe you can't blame nobody for this you cannot blame anybody else for this there's no fucking way in god green earth you're gonna put this on nobody else gypsy the only person that got off for that because her mama literally lied to her Heather was never diagnosed. Maybe she needed therapy or pills. Maybe her misbehaviors were cries for help, but this is just speculation. Her poor family was at its wits end for years and nothing could have prepared them for Heather's last violent act. Thankfully, it will be a long time before she's out on the streets again. Let's just hope she and Tommy can be rehabilitated and that Sheila's family are able to live a normal, happy life. Hey man, appreciate y'all watching this with me, dog. Don't forget to like and subscribe back with another one soon, baby. Yeah.